comments and recognition. Do I? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't have any cards. No, no cards. No. no comment. We'll move on to uh, 8.0 correspondence proposals. 8.1. Any representatives from the ATA wishing to speak? How about CSEA under 8.2? 8.3 student representative. Renell, there must be something going on at the high school, except a lot of big deep bowls of dirt. All right, um, last Thursday was senior night, and in honor of the senior football package, I'm sure that I just heard about you guys, um, during the varsity football game. And due to varsity and junior football teams winning last week's CF game, they managed to make it to the playoffs uh, for the first time in a couple of years. Tomorrow they have a game against uh, Calgary Marietta at 7.30 at Lakeside High School. And if our team manages to win, we're going to have a home game against Friday. Right? Is that both teams or varsity or JV? Both or against the same school. My um, UCLA representative will be visiting Vasquez on Monday the 17th next week. Um, and we'll be going over application requirements and answering questions during lunch. Blood drive will be taking place on campus next Tuesday on the 18th as well. And the Young Americans uh, had a second workshop last Wednesday, and VHS along with eight other schools will be having performance at the La Miranda Theater on November 31st. There will be a UCLA field trip as well on December 2nd, available to all grade levels in last days, so they can kind of see what the UCLA might be in the potential future. Um, there's a huge amount of signups for the ASVAB. Uh, this year will take place in the summer. And uh, the Herbert Big Christmas Carol and the season at Mel are on December 9th. And events aside, I'm happy to report that there's been an increase in freshman participation in the school in the form of clubs. Not only has there been an increase in club members overall over the past few years, but uh, both Tech Club and the Campus Beautification, Beautification Club have been served by freshmen. This demonstrates that they feel more welcomed and encouraged to directly participate with the school regardless of the grade level. Unlike how when I was a freshman, the JSB is much more supportive and encouraging in helping us survive the great clubs. The UCLA field trip, how is the, if the child wanted to go on that, to, is that something they coordinate? Or? Yeah, there's a uh, sign in the office. So just through the office, and it's going to be like a bus taking them there? Or Very cool. I think that's a really good thing. So on the 17th, uh, they're going to be at the school, and on December 2nd, there's going to be a field trip. Thank you very much. VHS construction, were you going to wait until they get I was going to wait until that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 8.5 superintendent correspondence. Uh, I'm going to hold my comments to the construction. Okay. 8.6 board member comments. So, uh, Larry, anything? No. Yes. No comments. Uh, any comments, Matt? Mike? Okay, so far, we're just getting the switch. Yeah. Okay, consent agenda. Uh, we have a move. So moved. Second. Discussion? All question? Aye. Uh, Aye. 10.0 personnel services. 10.1 leave of absence. Recommended board consider approval of leave of absence for employee number 141551. Uh, uh, do we have a move? So moved. I'll second. Um, the only question I have is uh, how are we going to backfill the position to hold it? If the person's going to be out for you later? Or you're talking about? 10.1 leave of absence. Maintenance oh, okay. Rounds. Well, we, we currently have already, uh, we will have a substitute. And so that position won't be filled until such time that he would make that decision of whether or not he's going to either resign or. But I, I think, yeah, that's what I mean. Is, is there's somebody to sub? That, that is a current absence. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 Uh, 10.2 declaration of need for fully qualified educators. So moved. Second. Any discussion by staff? Members of the board? Call the question. Aye. 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 Job description, food services, utility worker. Do we have a move? So moved. Second. Discussion by staff? How about you have a question? So this is just the creation of the job description. This was a position that, as uh, due to a resignation, we're consolidating a few positions into one so we can be more. I guess creative with how we disseminate the work in food services. Not a net gain. Sorry. It's not a net gain of employee. No, no. They're actually consolidating. That's correct. Position that represents that. Yes. Now this.
this is only a job description. Not it's only a job description. Anybody, but is it going to lead to uh, additional hire that will have an impact on budget? It will be, no, it will be a backfill of the position of somebody that had resigned. So it's in essence budget neutral? Yes. It's just a change in how we structure uh, the workload. Any other discussion? Call the question? Aye. 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 11.0, business and financial, resolution 14-15.03. Declaring it usable, obsolete, or no longer needed equipment or materials. Do we have a move? Move. Mm -hmm. second. Any discussion by staff? Members of the board? Call the question. Aye. 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 Resolution 14-15.05, approving assignment of delinquent tax receivables to the uh, California Statewide Delinquent Tax Financial Authority. Do we have a move? So moved. Second. Discussion by staff? By the board? Straightforward. Call the question. Aye. 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 11.3, change order number three, James E. Thompson, uh, DBA GTS construction for the Vasquez High School project phase one. We have a move. I'll second. Okay, uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to just basically point out a couple different things on this uh, uh, as you will take a look at it. We had quite a lengthy discussion as related to any kind of an allowance, and um, so let me back up. Look at A first. A, uh, I appreciate uh, Mr. DeVoe had taken a look at some of the electrical components. Uh, remember that we had planned this facility quite some time ago. And so as a result of this, uh, we have decided to obviously upgrade a lot of the technology. Therefore, we're not going to go with projector mounts or screens and things like that. We're going to do some different, uh, newer technology. And so we're eliminating that. So we'll get a credit back to uh, the district, okay, in the amount of $3,000, every dollar counts. The second piece is, and we had talked about it previously, is this credit for the low voltage allowance out of phase one. Now, it doesn't mean we're not doing low voltage. What we're going to do, and you'll see it in the phase two allowance uh, for the communication piece, and we'll fold it into phase two work. So we'll get a credit out of phase one, but it's going to be accounted for and rolled over, if you will, into phase two. So the dollar value is going to be there, but what we needed to do is make sure that we consolidate those services so we don't have two different vendors, two different startups, two different contracts, etc. We want to make sure we consolidate all the communication services in one contract. This opportunity gave us the chance to do that. We chose to do it this way to be more efficient. So it's still there, but it's going to be in phase two. So there, I know it's about a. Uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred twenty thousand six hundred. Twenty six hundred. Um, so that's the value of the phase one that was allocated for that. So that will credit back to the phase one. Yes. And remember, you were worried about. We were worried about the change order in phase one uh, last time. We were one hundred eighty thousand went out of uh, out of our allowances. Yes. So we'll actually net better. Exactly. As long as, and that was my question to you, and I want to make sure I understood the answer, the allowance in phase two, in phase two's uh, contract, of somewhere around 600000 is sufficient to do the entire thing. So the problem with that is we don't know yet, only because it's a design build, and I know we've kind of gone around with this term, but in essence, this is an assumption. We've built it in. Uh, it hasn't been designed yet. We haven't gone out to bid yet. But we're allowing for $600,000 for the work based on all of our discussions and based on the expertise of previous systems, we believe that's going to be sufficient. So and if $200,000 is sufficient for phase one, it stands to reason $600,000. A little bit of pad, what we talked about. Would be sufficient for both. Yeah, and, but if, you know, we go voice over IP and we get some new, you know, I, I, I don't know what the bids right. are going to come in at. Thank you. Any other discussion? Call question? Aye. 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 11.4. I think we're going to have to slow down. Yes, we are. Resolution 14-1504, site lease, facilities lease, construction provisions. Guaranteed maximum price, James D. Thompson, JTS construction for phase two. Okay. Okay. So, uh, move. Oh, yeah. Move. So moved. Second. Okay. Later in second. Take it, Doc. Anybody else need a site map? We'll be talking about that if you want to give that to anybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Matt, did you get a site map? I did not. Okay, can you get an excellent map? 
which match all other buildings in phase one. We're, we've revised the gas, sewer, and water plan for building D, revised site electrical plans for building D, building D and the parking lot lighting, and uh, modular materials to match the rest of modular buildings, original project specifications, DSA dated 6 12 Original B plans DSA dated 6 12 Original landscape plans DSA dated 6 12 And addendum one and bulletins one through five. The access road from Escondido, future classrooms, and softball field with ramps are specifically not part of this project. However, if you'll take a look at it, and again, I'm not going to get into the budget and all the details, you see the total dollar value is $10 million, uh, $406. But as you see in your schematic and your budget that you have, after we get done with all of this and we have soft costs and, and you see the total project costs, out of the 14.4, we'll have in excess of $2.5 million remaining for the board to decide on what's next. What do we build with that $2.5 million? So I guess the celebration for us is we get all of what we've always wanted with the exception of what they enlisted here. The road on Escondido, future classrooms, and the softball field. That's the only things that we're missing, if you will, as a result of this guaranteed maximum price in this project in phase two. Um, I don't know, if Matt, if you have a chance to take a look at that, it's in the Dropbox if you have it. Uh, and then, so if you have questions of that on the budget, scope, etc., now would be the time. And obviously, these gentlemen are here and, and more than willing to answer your questions if I can. Anything on scope and what they'll be providing out of phase two? I think we've got. you didn't mention, but it's obvious here. The yes, yes. So it would. It might seem counterintuitive that with something that's this intricate involves so many numbers uh, that we should be having all kinds of discussion. But uh, my next point. I've gone over this. I've gone over this at Um I know you've had contact with individual board members. Uh, you and I sat down and talked about it today. Uh, I don't know what else to uh, to say. Uh, it would be speak for the sake of talking sense doing that. So uh, um, I've looked at it. I see it. Um, every, everything seems to match up and, and align uh, as to how we got here. Uh, I know Mike had a number of questions. Um, I presume they've been answered. If not, this would be his time. But um, dating all the way back to the original allocation and going back all the way to 2002, I've looked at those numbers. And uh, let's get this darn thing. Part of the problem is we, um, we had 60 days. I mean, it was on a whirlwind. Uh, we, we, you know, be able to get go through bid and have these gentlemen kind of bet it and go through that process. We just didn't have time to drop elevations at a big tree. You know, excuse me, we've seen that before. You know what it is. It's the same same configuration. Uh, and I think the greatest thing about it is. It's as per the original design, uh, and, and actually it's enhanced, if you will. Uh, Lee and Gary spent a lot of time going over the plan and really fine-tuning it and making sure that everything is, is there and uh, it, it's going to be a, a beautiful facility. It really is. Now, the process is going to look like this. If, in fact, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will uh, vote yes for this, uh, the process is going to be uh, we'll take a look and do all the signatures. We have all those prepared tonight. Uh, and all those signatures will happen. I then will have a uh, uh, pretty good session with the notary tomorrow. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that needs to be notarized. It'll be a couple hours worth of documentation and going through that process. It's quite a bit of package. After that, uh, my intention is to send it up. Uh, and Jim and I have talked about strategically how to do this is put it in FedEx and get it up to the state and, and get it there by Monday morning. If some calamity happens, okay, the FedEx plane crashes or 
who knows? Something, it gets, you know, it can't be lost. Remember, yeah. this is the VHS High School process. We get receipts. <laughs> we got everything. We have redundant systems where we can fly up on Tuesday and hand deliver it by close of business. So we, we get two sets of notarized. There's actually how many, Jim? Six? I, I didn't have a question. How, how many so sets of notarized sets of documents? When you have the signing party tomorrow. Yeah, how many? Because I said if it was done tonight, six. I was going to offer to be the courier to drive up to Sacramento. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want anything to happen to this. Well, um, but because I thought, well, if you do put one copy in with FedEx and it disappears, now we're scrambling to get notarized copies no, for, for the no. courier on, on, on Monday night and Tuesday. No, yeah, it's, it's all ready to go. It's all planned. And there'll be a separate set of signed <laughs> ones here. Okay, thank you. There's six <laughs> copies. And again, we'll, we can fly up on Monday. We have a tracking number. We oh, of course. Can be okay. yeah. So the, the superintendent has graciously <laughs> agreed to keep himself available on Monday. Thank you. So that if something were to happen and it's not delivered at the time that UPS said it was to be delivered, he will take another set, duplicate set of signed documents. We will fly him up there under armed guard, and, <laughs> and we will get him to the desk to present this material uh, before the end of business day on, on the 18th. Excellent. What's the cutoff? Uh, Tuesday. The 18th. Of business. 5 p.m. So we have we have time, but the window's tight. Uh, I think you know. We we'll just drive up or something. Worst case scenario. We'll drive up. Me and Mike will drive up. CHP escort. Yeah. Um, so this is she's saying it's guaranteed Monday by 10:30. Uh, but you know how that goes. Is um, there insurance there for 30 million? <laughs> <laughs> right. Probably should. Can I have a couple comments. Sure. So first, uh, just to let you all know, we we do do our homework. I read every last word of the contracts and the lease. I can attest. And um, <laughs> it, it was rather easy this time because it's essentially verbatim of the lease lease back arrangement from the first phase, yes. except for the dollar value and the date of execution. Um, and furthermore, for me, the, the ultimate test was, is it the same project as we started with years ago, coming in against the same budget? Because a couple of years have elapsed. And um, effectively, that's, it passed that test for me. There's $2.7 million left over, but there's not a softball field, not a road. And what was the other? Uh, there was the, uh, no, we had that. It was the, the road. The road, the softball field. Future, well, we had, you know, the, all the ramps in the softball and the project. Ramps. So what I'm trying to say is, so then I said to myself, does that sound like about $2.7 million worth of work? And I'm not in your business, but it passed the sniff test. So to me, I think this is very successful because, at least the way I view it, is in the couple of years that elapsed, the budget hasn't grown any, and the project hasn't shrunk. And um, I think on behalf of my kids, who are students there, and a board member, and the community for helping us get, get there. Joyful. Let me let me make it very clear too. I think the great thing we, we put all the accoutrements, if you will, in the, in phase two that we've now added in phase one and to and include you know different uh, noise canceling panels, if you will, in the gym so it doesn't sound like a, a tin can in there when you get 400 people in in the gymnasium. So you put you know a real nice sports court flooring, uh, laser engraved color through. Uh, graphics on the floor and on the gym uh, bleachers. So I mean, it's going to be absolutely beautiful as far as uh, uh, aesthetically as well as functionally. It's going to be uh, very well done. So again, uh, you're not getting slighted here in any way, shape, or form with this project. Normally, we drop the tennis court from one from the plan, uh, one to plan B. It, it is on the master site plan, yes. But That's something that well, well, we can talk about that at a. At a, at a we're going to have to talk about that next. We're going to have some proposed project values with some itemized list of things. If you guys say no, not this, yes, how about, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to uh, put together exact costs because you don't know how one might be packaged with another. So, yeah, you know, something over here could be reduced if this is brought together. But notwithstanding that issue, uh, and it's a great, it's not even a problem, but it's a great concern or issue to have is to begin to start putting some, some 
cost estimates together so that we can start to evaluate where we're at with the project so that we can potentially add things that have been removed, whether it be the road service, whether it be tennis courts, uh, how we program the old school site, demolition of that site. It would be nice to be able to do that while construction is still underway and before it's completed, rather than to send everybody home and then come back and restage and associate all the costs with having to do that. Is to see if we can't do it while the project is still in place. Uh, now it's going to take a little bit of time to build um, uh, gyms, so but there's nothing that should prevent us from just kind of lollygagging around and not starting to look at what those costs are. Um, you know, I was always concerned about coming through the back door of a brand new project and not having that curb appeal and you know, showing up in front of the school, but we're all willing to uh, accept that and get the project done. But maybe there's a possibility now we can do it. The question is, 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 is the cost of the road, it's engineering and it's it's going to have to be re-engineered still, correct? It is. Now, now, that, remember the elevation now the elevation changed, so it has to be re-engineered and it has to be built. Yeah. And is that cost worth what we might be able to do in terms of additional FF&E and, &E and, and uh, reprogramming the, the old school site? I don't know. We're making the current entrance. So I, I think the best way to uh, determine which way to go is to start bringing some cost estimates forward. Right. And what we're thinking is doing things like that. We'll have a list of items. Putting it things in the packages. Yeah, it'll be in the construction, like it'll be a phase three proposal. And it'll basically exhaust that fund. And, and we'll then put together another phase three uh, guaranteed maximum price contract uh, going with JTS. And we'll take a look at and see what that structure and function looks like. And if you guys have, you know, different things, and we'll, we'll have to almost... Uh, not necessarily a work study, but it'll be a good spirited topical discussion after I get some, you know, structural documents for you to review. It's also helpful that rather than just have every every individual thing as a line item is to package them. Yeah. And have, you know, a package one or a package two or a package three. So that we can pick. Um, I don't I don't think any of us want to spend whatever balance we might have all on one thing. You know, we don't know. Yeah. So I think uh, once we get the, uh, the smoke cleared from this hair on fire yeah. uh, episode that we're in right now, it would be time to start looking at that so that we can keep anything that we might do in line with the current so we'll get the flow of the project. I mean, phase two, if we go lucky, we will come with the match. The phase two has happened very efficiently. Why only was phase one? Some of the stuff that we repurposed uh, Two weeks ago, yeah, and so it's, it's all right along those lines. Um, and it might just be my naivete that I didn't I didn't see it prior, but I, I think it's worth uh, uh, stating uh, because I think it goes to the competency of our staff and the consultants. And you know, it, uh, as much as I like to uh, slam the state every day, um, the fact that. Um, some of the 14.4 we got was actually some, actually some hardship money, maybe a million dollars in hardship money. Uh, the state just doesn't give money away, so I presume that had to do with consultants sitting down. It also had to do with the fact that our bond uh, numbers were so low, Larry. So uh, that we've always uh, wrung our hands about. It. And it actually ended up helping to benefit us because we got uh, over 900,000 from the state because of that reduced bond number. So they were basically helping us meet our end of the match. It was an application for financial hardship. Yeah. So uh, by submitting that and staying on top of that, it, it helped to uh, uh, feed that bottom line. Uh, so that you know, that was a that was a piece of good news to see. Well, the truth of it is too is as uh, uh, Jim and we looked about. I think that was one of the first things we did is the track map analysis. Took a look at you know future studies and things like that, and I think uh, all of that has significantly impacted as positives. Uh, I, I would fear uh, what it would look like in the future, but if, you know what he did previously and what we look at it, uh, all of the traffic 
et cetera, the assessment of what you're looking at. So it's a very, very healthy project as a result. And anything that we do do relative to uh, like kind of phase three, let's please make sure that we are looking at a girls softball field in that. Yes, sir? I know that they've often felt they're always at the back of the line or even outside the door. So, um, well, it's a Title IX issue. We have a, we have a legal Title IX issue as well as a moral obligation to make sure that our girls are subject to the same facility. It's been great what we've been able to do with the park, and I, I thank the park immensely, but you know, at some point it's time to bring them home uh, and do what we can, what we can do to support our, our girl athletes. I have a few comments and some polls before you review shortly. All right, uh, any other discussion? Part of the board, anything? Okay, as to the resolution in support of the facilities lease agreement, call the question. Aye. 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 High school construction project, we have a move. Move. One second. Discussion? Call the question. Aye. Oh. Aye. Oh. Sorry, I did. When we I approved this for phase one, it was red. Uh, I know. But didn't, didn't we establish a maximum that it was authorized to uh, change order? I mean, we should just make it the same as the last one. I guess that applies to right? Well, it can. I, I, I think uh, Mr. Fox is right. I can't remember the actual dollar value. Um, I think it was Mr. Rickenauer who, or oh, I'm sorry, it? it was uh, Mr. DeStasso who said, the Mark's guy. up to this amount. <laughs> so I, you know, I didn't know what they wanted to do. It would seem reasonable to do the same. Considering it's phase two, I haven't even given much thought as to what, it, um, what that should even be. Um, the, the, the last time we did it, we also uh, asked that it be brought before us so that we were aware of it. The next event of the board meeting. Well, it's limited to what, 190, so the question is, is and, and then brought to the future board for ratification and approval. The issues here is that there's stuff that needs to, that might come up that needs to get reacted to. Yeah, and by the way, already correct. Yeah. It is the key. Yeah. Otherwise, it could end up charging us in the lanes. Sure. Uh, so all I'm going to say is, I think for phase one, we have to be good. Because my recollection is correct. It's now. I don't think we've got a problem in phase one. We would choose to do that in phase two. Is there, is there any dollar amount that if, if, if it were capped there, would create? I think that. Potentially could, but I, um, I can't think of what it would be. I mean, it might. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's all based on the budget. It's all based it, on it is. Let me, let me give you. A well, point. it is, but you know, you can do a change order for 189,000, and you're pretty much out of the game after that. Yeah. I don't think you would do something like that. No, I, I, I haven't. Uh, the things, even the change order that I brought to you, that was significant, uh, was voted on, and then we instituted it. So. Um, you know, obviously I'm going to follow the same practice, but if you'd like to put a cap on it, that's fine. We can do the cap similar to whatever the phase one cap is. That way, you can figure that out. We should just amend the motion. Yeah, so amend the same motion. cap as the phase one. As cap, as imagine as phase one. one. Well, I don't know what that cap is. I don't think that's what it's Same as phase, phase, phase one, we can go look at the phase one. Well, well it's not clear that you know, there was any particular logic in that either. So, let's pick whatever we think. Anything logic. substantial, you're going to bring at least a board person. Of course, I'm not going to spend $200,000 on a change order for that. Well, that whole was in one change yeah. 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 I'm comfortable so. passing it the way it is. It's, it's all, this is a very, you know, it's a process that we're all involved in. You know, and then he talks to all the individual board members, the president, and like that. I think he doesn't even you know, field authority. So, in my opinion, I think we should just do it the way it is. Well, we're matching. How, how about we do this? Uh, Without putting a dollar value on it, because I don't know how that may or may not impact, how about if we uh, uh, amended the proposed language that, uh, if at all possible, we bring change orders to the board if it doesn't impact the schedule of the project. And if there's a, yeah, if there's a critical path issue, then you're going to have ability to make that make that change. If it does not impact the critical path, if you can bring it to the board. Um, you know, what else? I, I mean, I don't know how much.
much uh, fiduciary responsibility to exercise beyond that. Okay. I think I can operate within that and obviously use discretion in terms of what that is. Okay. And so, that that or so, so the, uh, I'm going to uh, propose, an amendment. propose an amendment that if it does not, if the, if the change order does not impact critical path timelines, that it be brought to the superintendent brings it to the board. If it does, the superintendent has the authority to make uh, the change on the spot. Is there a second to that? Up to the $9. Well, yeah, I can't go beyond that. Yeah. I'll second that, that, that amendment. Okay, so call the question to the library amendment. All right. All right. Okay, with that, then, uh, with that amendment included, are we prepared to vote on field? Yes. Call the question. Aye. 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 Phase two construction uh, administration fee, A and B services for catastrophic architects. Do we have a move? Move. I'll second. Um, I think just because it is a public meeting, uh, just explaining what we're voting on is that are these are the, the fees that will be associated with the architect for uh, phase two work. It is, and if, if you take a look at uh, the document we talked about, it basically this is. Uh, elements of DSA improved construction project. It's all uh, the construction administration, which is part of phase two. There's no escalation fees in terms of, um, say, there's uh, inflation, if you will, based on previous contracts, the construction administration, and also obviously the, uh, as the project lead architect, now that phase two is coming in, this would be an appropriate dollar value that's in line with this previous uh, construction project value out of phase one. So this is just, it's not enhanced at all. I think Gary uh, uh, can attest to that. He didn't, he didn't add or pad any of it. It's the same dollar value that he would have received. And we're talking one. about a fee that uh, will not exceed $96,776, correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay, make sure you got that number right. That is, yes, that is correct. So effectively, what you just said is it's the same fee structure. Yes. As on phase one. That's correct. Thank you. Yes. He didn't typically find the escalate. So he did not. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 Future agenda items. How are we doing on developers uh, these things? Um, uh, I believe um, I saw that there's a there's a whole packet of stuff we had to provide them. We finally got I mean a whole ton of stuff. Uh, it's in process, and uh, they're currently working on it. Uh, Dr. Pedraza developed a bunch of stuff uh, and gave it to them. And uh, again, it's just a packet of material they're looking at, and now they're evaluating it. They'll, they'll get us uh, uh, some information. I'm not sure. Jim, do uh, you know ETA on the developer fee study? Did they give you an ETA on that after uh, we had the stuff from uh, Dr. Pedraza? Remember that? We've been supplying them with what they've asked yes. for. However, they're still working on working up. The Did they give you an ETA? Like, no, I didn't think so either. But okay, all right. If I as soon as I get that, I'll let you know. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. Sir. Typically, pay. I know they have, and we've responded and, and given them everything they've asked for. So, all right. We'll move to uh, calendar. We are looking at. Adding to the calendar uh, December 18th as a special board meeting in the event that a uh, special board meeting is necessary in regard to um, our re hearing on uh, Albert Einstein at the Santa Cruz uh, Charter School. I like the Santa Cruz. Yeah, that's what you had a different one. So, um, we're gonna. We can go ahead and add that to the calendar. So December 18th is on the calendar. Uh, as a potential meeting, and it would be it would be a special meeting. Um, but I I think I would speak on behalf of all members of the board. Let's not handle it as a typical special meeting where we give 24 hour notice. Let's do a regular or uh, full blown notice of 72 plus hours. Considering the topic, absolutely, um, and handle it in that in that way. Okay. Anything else in regard to? Uh, uh,
calendar, gentlemen. All right, uh, moving to closed session. Uh, in closed session, we discussed a, uh, uh, some personnel issues. There were no vote or action taken in uh, regard to those. Uh, we also discussed uh, legal issues as it relates to our lawsuit uh, and also the rehearing of the uh, Albert Einstein Academy charter school petition. And we took a uh, three to one vote in closed session with Mr. Lake and and uh, Mr. Brindauer was not, not president for that. It was three to one in favor of holding a, a rehearing, or a new hearing, I should say, a new hearing for that petition submittal on December 4th. And we also asked uh, in that meeting prior to the vote that uh, that also be treated uh, with at least 72 hours of advance notice to all parties um, so that uh, the public is fully and completely aware that we are having um, a board meeting on that day, December 4th, to receive and hear uh, and have a hearing on that petition. At 7.30, Mr. President? I don't know that we set a time at this point. Probably do 7.30 and possibly close session. Close session. Okay. So we'll add a, a tentative start time at 7.30 uh, to the December 4th day. Possible close session. Uh, if you see any documents or anything floating around that suggest that's a tentative date, that's what we're doing tonight and why we took the vote. So there's no longer a tentative meeting. That will be a date certain December 4th meeting on the hearing of uh, the petition for the Albert Einstein Academy Charter School in Santa Maria. Okay. Um, and that was it for closed session. Um, yeah, thanks, Mr. President. Um, Right now, available. Yeah. So, yeah. Once you want the closed session, the summer 14th. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we can reduce the stuff. So 15.0 adjournment. Do we have so, a move under 15.1? Do we have a move? A second. Second. Call the question. Aye. Aye. Happy Aye. birthday, Larry. Happy birthday. Yeah.